All right, so here we are. What I'm going to do is take and put this dude into a prefab uh, because I'm not sure if we're ready for him yet. He's just too sweet. So I'm going to make a prefab called Soldier. And then plop him in there. There we go. So now we can call him out anytime we want if we're ready, when we're ready for him. We will soon be ready for him. Uh, we're missing a few abilities to trigger animation, so so we we got to work on that system, and we got to work on a raycast system. So we know what happens when I jump over the character, when I go underneath the character, everything about that enemy or any enemy in the future. So back to the idea that there is a cube. I want to simplistic look at this so let's look at a cube let's take that cube you're like god I graduated from cubes I don't want another cube uh, you haven't seen anything yet so here's materials no arrow no nothing about it. we know that script works the follow script works fine it's the approach script that we're having a hard time with. Okay, so there we go. Take my player, put him on the other side of the world. All right, good. And let's assign some stuff to the enemy. Let's assign him... Uh, rigid body. Okay. That should make him so he falls to the floor. Good. Squirrel against cube, just like it used to be. All right. So this is the code we're looking at. Um, this trigger via ray cast. And let me show you why we need to look at this now. One, it's horribly complex. This stuff right here way too complex. It's it's using line cast information and it's using a lot of if statements to do it. Um, another, and another thing is a lot of this is snarfed code. So snarfed code would be the first person shooter code. So if you look at the first person shooter tutorial uh, from Unity 3D, you know some of this code is snarfed from that. I will admit that, especially this. It is was a time because you know I was learning as much as you so now I've graduated from snarfing code and more into writing my own code that makes more sense so let's do this we're going to make a code and that code I showed you online where to get the code it was at uh, house of tutorials dot net and that would be right here house of tutorials dot net slash game scripts and we're looking at this simple Raycast JS. So that's what we need to call it. It needs to be called that. So I'm going to copy that right there. And then we're going to go into Unity and make a new script called that. There we go. Wow, that's pretty bad. Let's see what we can do here. Simple raycast. Huh. Moving assets, new behaviors, JS to act. That's posted. No comments. All right. So it won't be called that. Weird. Let me just try typing it in. Okay. So that's what it was. I can't copy that from the internet. See? All right. 
copy and paste is bad. So this is what we're going to have to do is start coding this by hand. And I'm going to narrate or you can just look at the script and start doing it. But if you just do that, if you just type it out from the internet, please note that you probably won't learn as much as if you follow along with the video. But you can always resource it later on in case you have a hard time getting it. Okay. All right. So it starts out uh, with the function start trigger. So that's the only bit of code that I kind of kept along with it. So let's do this. I want to copy that. And I want to paste that into the above function. So this, this handles before this ever even triggers. So I still have to know who the player is corresponding to a different object, or it'll think that every object in the scene is the player. So the player still needs the player flag attached to it. Also, this needs another close bracket. There we go. Okay, next. Um, I still have to know this. If the target is null, just return. And we're going to use the return a lot now. Return just kicks it out of the update. So this update handles every every frame. Uh, the only way to kick it out is with a return. So if I don't like the results, return. And here's the fun stuff. Okay, we'll start with the basic. Um, let's do this. Uh, variable left. equals transform period direction and now this this makes more sense because I showed you the arm and now you know what vector 3 is corresponding to a negative vector 3 hopefully okay so that was a way to show that so the left would be a negative vector because it shows up on the left hand side of the screen and it's based upon uh, everything on the right hand side of the screen is a positive everything on the left hand side of the screen is a negative okay Remember algebra? Remember that grafting out point thing? Yeah, you remember. Okay, so we'll just start something simple like this. And then what we're going to do is not type out the full code. What I want to show you is how this works. So down here below that, I'm going to start writing the left um, if statement. I think I'm running out of time too. So in the next video, I start writing the left if statement and showing you how this works.